So here we are then, back with F1 2021 and part uh, 13 or 14. Yeah, 14 <laughs> of our uh, immersive driver career mode with Alpine F1. Today, we've got the Singapore Grand Prix, but I am an absolute idiot. As you can see in the bottom right corner, it is going to be a five-lap race. So my plan for this weekend, because I'm usually terrible around Singapore and I really don't enjoy it, um, was to go back to the short weekends, 25%, because that's what a short weekend used to be. Little did I know that that's now five laps and, uh, well, once you've done practice, you can't go back. So I went into practice, came back out of it, noticed that in the bottom corner, but you cannot change it, um, no matter what you try. Once you've done practice, there's no going back. Uh, so we've got a full qualifying session, but then a five lap sprint race. The good news is I might as well show all of that in today's video, so... Um, you should be able to uh, see that, um, hopefully, when it comes around. But uh, let's see how we get on in qualifying. First of all, the pace isn't very good this weekend. Uh, I have actually put all of the older engine parts into the car to try and, you know, get those out of the way in a Grand Prix I don't think we're going to do well at. Um, and we'll just have to see how we get on. But uh, let's see how we get on in qualifying. Okay, then here we go for our first flying lap around Singapore and, well, goodness me, two seconds off Carlos Sainz. This is going to be horrible, a 137 flat that is just nowhere near going to be good enough. Um, probably not even to get through Q1, but uh, we will try our best. We will go out there once again on some brand new tyres and, and see if we can improve on that. Well, here we go then. Second lap, and uh, well, it's a a 136.3, which is uh, enough for 15th at the moment. I don't think it will be enough to get through. I think uh, other guys will be quicker out there. But you know, we've given it our best shot. 136.3. I really don't think there's much more time uh, than that in it. I've got to be honest. Well, there you go then. Out in Q1, down in 18th place. That is, uh, yeah, quite devastating. I, I would not have been able to find another half second, though, to get up uh, into Q2. The pace just isn't here this weekend, and, uh, you know, it's probably down to the fact we've got uh, a really old engine in there. We haven't got all of our power uh, that we usually do, but even so... I don't know where the AI are, are finding the pace, but uh, we'll see how we go on in the race. I'll take a brand new engine, and I'll be with you for a five-lap sprint race from the back of the grid. Against the spectacular backdrop of the Singapore skyline, Formula One returns once again to do battle in what tends to become something of an endurance race, with the notorious sauna-like temperatures in the cockpit making for an extremely physically challenging Grand Prix. The Marina Bay street circuit then has 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right, taking us a total of 3.1 miles around the landmarks of downtown Singapore. An average lap speed around here, just 107 miles per hour. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the run down into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle. And the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. 
With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Carlos Sainz and Norris, Perez, Vettel, Stroll and Pierre Gasly, Sonoda, Raikkonen, Antonio Giovinazzi and Ricardo, Latifi, Fernando Alonso, they've taken a grid penalty. Mick Schumacher and George Russell. Mazepin and the captain. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Okay then, here we are. Down on the track, obviously no tyres to worry about. And uh, what I'm going to do, because it is... Uh, a sprint race because I'm going to be going for a lot of overtakes. I'm going to give myself three flashbacks in this race um, to basically, you know, take some risks <laughs> and try and get something out of this. We're probably going to DNF, let's be honest, but um, hey, we're going to die trying. Here we go then, ready for the Grand Prix. And uh, not even a formation lap, we are just ready for the lights. Lights out, away we go here in Singapore, and that typical is uh, one of our best getaways of the season. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't make anything of it as we hurt towards turn one. We're just, uh, again, playing it fairly easy. We can't play too much of a long game today, but we might as well at least make sure we get through the first corner safely enough. But Mazepin has other ideas. I have no idea what the damage model is like in a five lap race, whether there will be any at all. But I'm not going to use one of my uh, flashbacks to find out. <laughs> but we've got a chance here as we go down the inside, and that is Fernando next to us, but we are through. And round the outside we go, and up the 16th position, so not too bad so far. Good start. And, uh, well, Ricardo on the medium tyres, I'm not entirely sure why that is. I guess maybe he got through Q2 on the mediums and has to start on those tyres. It seems a, a little bit of an oversight, but uh, that's fine by us. So we're up to 15th position now. I don't think we're going to get into the top 10, though, but this uh, could well be a... An exciting little sprint race. But you feel after the first lap there's just going to be absolutely nothing for us in terms of opportunities. Might be able to get Nicholas Latifi. I think we were actually quicker than him in qualified, so he's one of the very few on the track than that we can go quicker around Singapore then. Still got Daniel Ricciardo behind us, of course. That's uh, going to be a real tough one to keep behind. But here we go on Nicholas Latifi right in his slipstream. He tries to push us towards the wall. But we go down the inside and sweetly through. I'll tell you what. I quite enjoy Singapore in, the, in a sprint race. We might have to make a, a yearly thing of this. Up to 14th now. Come through the old Singapore sling section. I wonder if we can catch and overtake Giovinazzi. We've had a, a fair few good battles with him this year. Can we have another one? That's the question. And it's uh, Lance Stroll, I think. Up in... 12th position at the moment, which is decent for us in our run for 5th, but of course after Aston Martin's 1-2 last episode, that's kind of not a thing anymore. And especially with our pace recently, it's uh, gone off a cliff really. Because the teams around us are developing so well and we're just being left behind. Speaking of being left behind, we are very much being left behind by DRS Antonio Giovinazzi right now. Within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Can we get into the 
the honor zone here. Seem to be within a second, so we will get DRS. But of course, Antonio has got it as well on Lance Stroll ahead. This is lap three, remember? For five, so we really will not have too many more opportunities out there. But uh, all of a sudden, the pace seems pretty good. I mean, a 138.2. That's not far off what we qualified on. I think it was a 136.3. Considering we're in a, a race situation, that shows how ridiculous our qualifying pace was. And I'm going to use the first of our three flashbacks there to try and stay close to Giovinazzi. Yeah, much better. I think that was worth using. Because we might actually have a, a half chance of passing him if we get really close. Ah! Well, there you go. <laughs> Are you okay? That was a big one. Oh, Confirm dear. you're okay, please. That's more like me at Singapore. Oh dear, right, two of three now to be used. This way I thought I'd have broke myself again there. So we've only got one more flashback left in this race, so got to start being a little bit more careful. I have sort of been chucking it round. Oh, come on. By the way... Usual rules apply. I will use uh, flashbacks if we get any seconds. harsh penalties. That I don't think a fair. You know, in that last corner there. I don't think we put the corner. I don't think we gained an advantage. So if we were to do that another two times and get a penalty for it, I would flashback it. Okay. I'm curious though. It doesn't look like the simulation damage is on. Because we have clobbered the wall a couple of times and not lost anything for our troubles. Well, we're outside of the second window now to Antonio. So I think 14th is going to be our best, but the fact we're going to beat our teammate, fingers crossed. Is quite ridiculous, really. From 20th on the grid. Oh dear. We're only allowed one more corner cut. Well, we get a three second penalty. We really can't afford a three second penalty. But uh, we'll stack sight first lap. Oh, there you go. Two second penalty. Well, we're not, we're not having any of that. So we'll use our last flashback of three. Make sure we're well within the limits. This is your final lap. Final lap of the race. And take on the final lap of this race. Unless there's any retirement or a big crash. I don't see us getting any more positions unfortunately but you know I think this was a fun way of doing the Singapore Grand Prix quite honestly I think if we did a 50% race we'd probably finish somewhere in the bottom five anyway but at least we got some on track action some excitement and something a little bit different so potentially that's what we do for a few of the races next season you know, just just mix it up a little bit. Please let me know down in the comment section below what you think about that idea. Ooh, I thought we were going to get that penalty again there. But we just managed to sneak inside the limit there. And you can see I've got very ragged here because I'm desperate to try and stay ahead of Fernando Alonso. I 
think we should now. It's almost impossible to overtake anywhere except turn four here, so... Ooh, nearly went into the wall. Right, let's just make sure that we actually finish this race. But, uh, well, Bottas has won the Singapore Grand Prix. We're going to come round in 14th place. And it's a shame because our points streak has okay, ended. But, uh, home. you know, Fernando has shown that the pace wasn't in the car this weekend. It's, it's not our type of circuit. But uh, we get driver of the day. And look at that. I don't think that would have happened had we uh, been on a full race. A but there you go. Performance today. They should be proud. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. It wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? I have to give it to the captain. Way. That was a commanding performance today. <laughs> Very impressive indeed. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Well, I mean, <laughs> for us to already be two tenths off uh, Lewis Hamilton's fastest lap, you know, that, that shows we we were all right in the race. Our race pace was okay. I mean, we had put a new engine in there, and I wonder actually how much was the, the old engine hampering us you know you know was that the reason the true reason why i couldn't uh, get it hooked up in qualifying and maybe it could have been a very different weekend but hey a five lap sprint race there you go uh looking at the standings we are 11th and 12th i don't really see that changing um from now until the end of the season i would love to get into the top 10 I, I've, I've said that uh, on numerous occasions, I would love it if we could uh, if we could beat them. I would absolutely love it, uh, but we can't. Let's be honest. Uh, we are 47 points behind Aston Martin, so it's all about consolidation, making sure we do stay in front of AlphaTauri before the end of the year. You know, hey, maybe try and sneak a podium, that sort of thing. Uh, what I don't usually do is take you through. Uh, the the sort of race debrief. So I will do that in this episode. I am so sorry we. We accidentally put it down at five laps, but I there you go. Yours. You really cut your way through the field today. What was your strategy? There are rumours that you're looking for a contract with another team. Is there any truth to that? I mean, you know, I would certainly take a seat at Aston Martin at the moment. Do you think you were lucky not to end your race with that crash? A what crash? Um... No comment. Appreciate your time. Yeah, she doesn't give us the sigh uh, that she usually does when you say no comment. But there you go. And our rivalry with Sebastian Vettel, I think he's going to have won it now. There's still two races remaining, but it's almost impossible for us to, to overcome that. Uh, he has just had a brilliant spell of things, and he's propelled Aston Martin to heights that I didn't think they could hit. But... Uh, well, we've got six races to go, starting in Japan, um, with our brand new engine in hand as well, which is good. 
Um, so hopefully we'll be able to to do something in Japan. Then we've got USA, Mexico, Brazil, Australia, and uh, the UAE. I'm looking forward to, to pretty much all of those races, actually. Japan, I always enjoy driving. Never exactly the best around there, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to sneak into the points. Uh, that would be really, really good. We haven't had a DNF for, for quite a while now. Quite a string of reliability, which is good. Looking at the R&D, we have got a major uh, update in the pipeline, but it hasn't, it hasn't quite um, came to fruition yet. Let's just see... Okay, if anything we've had the new parts come through. through the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix. I mean, they seem to say that we are going to... I mean, if you look at that green section, does that take us up past the likes of Red Bull? No, it would take us pretty much up to Aston Martin, so maybe... This is back on, you know, if those come through, 19th of October. I wish I could see the full calendar. Is there a way to do that? Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how you how you see the full calendar, but it, it is a possibility. It really is a possibility to, to get out there and to, um, to get back up into the top 10. Maybe even fifth position. If those upgrades come through... As quick as they they might um, come through. Let's have a little look. Messages, developments completed. That's good. So uh, yeah, we look fairly on par with the guys at the moment. Just ahead of us, M very much ahead of Alpha Romeo and Alpha Tauri now. So, we could be it for a good weekend here. I'm going to keep the new engine in. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, and straight away, while we're on camera, I'm going to absolutely prove it to you that we are going back into the half-length uh, races. So, 27 laps of Suzuka. Interestingly, that changed the, the weather forecast for the uh, practice two. But, uh, yes, we'll go on long. That, that's that's what confused me because I thought half would be medium and yeah it, it's it's all just a mess really <laughs> but we will be uh, back on long next episode and I'm looking forward to that so hopefully you guys are too if you've enjoyed that give it a big thumbs up down below subscribe for more F1 content and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye